Hello and welcome back to Napoli. In this video I'm going to be doing a food tour of the city, starting with breakfast, trying some of the most famous cuisine here, which I'm sure some of you already know what that's going to include. So let's head on and begin the day. So I'm now sitting down here in Grand Café Gambrinus, which has been here since the beginning of the 19th century, one of the oldest and most famous cafes here in Napoli. I'm starting off with the classic Neapolitan sfogliatella, which comes with two types. One is the Ricci, which is the one I've got here, the short, crusty and flaky one. And the other one is the Frolla, which looks more like a sort of mini ricotta pie. And also a cappuccino. Most Italians or Neapolitans start their day with coffee, usually espresso, but I've gone with cappuccino to mix things up as I want to catch an espresso later on in the afternoon today at one of the famous espresso bars. So let's dig into the uh, sfogliatella. A thin stripped phyllo dough filled with citrus flavored ricotta cheese, only here in Naples. Very crunchy and flaky, the outside. So it's very sweet and comes off as more of a dessert than a savory pastry and most of the things that people have here to snack on at the beginning of the day are very sweet pastries typically here in Naples. Inside of the sfogliatella and the soft texture which complements the flaky outer layer of the pastry. You can find these sfogliatella almost everywhere in Naples. It will be the first thing that catches your eye through the glass of many pastry shop windows and you can also get it almost any time of day. It's usually available and most Neapolitans tend to go for it in the morning but it doesn't mean as a tourist you can't just have it as a snack in the afternoon. I mean why not with a coffee? Wash it down with the cappuccino. We all know how these taste, but uh, you know, I guess this one's well made, <laughs> considering it's a, one of the most famous cafes. Having walked on over to the other side of the city, not too far from the train station, I'm now here by La Antica Pizzeria de Michel, which is considered to be one of the best places to try the authentic margarita pizza born here in Naples and I can't wait to see how it tastes. One of the most famous places, most popular with tourists and locals and there's even a long queue to get in. It's only 12. Most Italians don't start their lunch until 1 p.m. I believe but here it's already busy so make sure you come early to get your space in the queue, afternoon or evening. So I'm now sat down here in De Michel with my little table and you can see the vibe around me. There are only four things on the menu, used to be only two, the margarita and the marinara. Marinara is a tomato based pizza with no cheese and just a little bit of garlic and oregano I believe. Margarita, cheese and tomato with basil. And the history of the margarita is actually shrouded in mystery. Um, there are many different stories of how it emerged. And some say that flatbreads with toppings were being served all the way back in the Roman times and in the ancient Greek times. It's difficult to know exactly, but the story goes along the lines that Queen Margarita in 1889 was served the margarita pizza, which consisted of cheese, mozzarella, uh, tomato and basil actually representing the colours of the modern day flag of Italy and that's how the legend began. People who know the history more than I do, maybe you can let me know in the comments below or just do your own research online. But born here in Naples it pretty much was and Neapolitans and Italians and international tourists alike have been devouring margaritas and other pizzas ever since. Okay. 
So here we go, the margarita has arrived. Look at that. It's absolutely huge, larger than the entire plate, and yet really thin. The crust is a little bit thicker, and the actual middle part of it is, is really thin, as you can see there. So I'm going to cut this up right now and get stuck in. Mm. Amazing. It's soft and doughy, but quite oily actually. Very light, not very filling, and really easy to chew. Soft, not crusty, apart from the edge here, which is charred from the oven. And look how easy it is to tear, just like that. Shows how soft it is. The ingredients of the mozzarella and tomato sauce just taste so fresh. And you know this has been cooked really quickly in the pizza oven. And I love the fact the kitchen here is open. You see it as you walk in towards your table and if you're sitting in the main room, you can actually watch them make it as you eat your pizza. This place has a really old school feeling. Even all the drinks are in a bottle. I actually ordered water and the guy came back with some Nastro Azzurro, <laughs> Italian beer. So I guess I'm sticking with this. So I just finished my pizza in there and it was probably one of the best pizzas I've ever had. Incredible, you've got to give it a try. It's like clockwork, so well organized. The toppings and the rolling of the dough and then into the oven and out again onto the plate and to the tables. And look at the queues now. There's a ton of people waiting to go in as it's around 1 p.m. So Make sure you go early. It opens in the afternoon around 11.30, but if you try and get there just before 12, between half 11, 12, you'll be down on the table, hopefully by quarter past 12, half past 12, depending how busy it is. Now I can't make a food video of Naples without giving a special mention to Gino e Toto Sorbillo, another famous pizza place to try the margarita. The pizza here might have been even better than Damichel and I'd say that it feels and acts a lot more like a restaurant than local pizzeria. Although expect long queues and hurried waiters as part of the dining experience. I'd recommend trying both Demichel and Gino Sorbillo as they are both world class. The guy who invented the Fiocco de Neve. So I'm now here in Pasticceria Popella to try the famous Fiocco de Neve which was invented by the guy who you've just seen in the shot there. He had the tattoo on his arm in 2005. A little bun with a sweet interior. It's made from a soft brioche dough and then a heart of whipped cream and ricotta and then dusted with icing sugar to give it that snowflake effect. Mm. Very creamy, super rich as you can see the inside there. Another great snack to have here in the north of Naples, like this foglietella. Very rich, creamy, flavoursome and sweet. And the owner whose tattoo I showed and who you can see behind me in the pictures there, he personally said I could have my Fiocco de Neve for free, so that was very nice of him. There's also a bunch of other pastries in here if you're interested. There's different cakes and things and all the way along. There are many to try and taste. And you can see a little pile of them here. So next up I'm coming for an espresso here in Naples which is a very strong element of the city's social culture getting an espresso in the morning, the afternoon with other locals, standing at the bar and just knocking it back, having a little conversation. And here I'm going into one called Cafe Chiofito, which is fairly well known and recommended to me by a few Neapolitans and I have been in here myself before and I thought it was pretty cool looking. So let's hop inside. Look at this. Really cool. Yeah. 
So I have ordered the most jacked up version of an espresso that you can get. It's the pistachino, pistachino, pistachio espresso with cream and nuts and pistachio uh, sauce and chocolate sauce, one not all kind of dripped together into this one thing, <laughs> this one crazy cup of caffeine. Normally I would just go for an espresso, but seeing as this is an exciting video to make, why not go for one of the coolest options? There's white chocolate, there's Brazilian coffee, there's Kinder, Nutella, there's loads. I love the fact that it comes with a chocolate spoon. How cool is that? Mixed in the whipped cream with the pistachio sauce and the coffee. So here we go. Wow. It's essentially a dessert. I mean, it's so sweet, but it tastes incredible. The coffee is strong, and so is the cream and the pistachio flavor that's so sweet. Really, really good. This is a cafe that does it all. You can see alcohol up here, granita de lemon and melon, and then soft drinks, sfogliatella, gelato, and of course, all the different types of coffees. Last sip, really good. I love how you always have lots of people standing at the bar and just drinking and chatting with each other. As I mentioned before, I came in. Unfortunately, I'm the only one here at the moment. Probably it's the wrong time of the afternoon to be here. But it's a really cool coffee culture you'll find here in Naples and also other cities in Italy but it seems very strong here in Napoli. Once again, the people of Naples have been very generous and after they saw me filming in their Cafe Ciofito, they gave me the drink for free. Very kind of them. So that's two places in a row. So after giving a few hours for that food to digest, it's now the cooler nighttime, as you can see here in Napoli, and I'm about to go inside or actually try on the street something called frittata di pasta, which is essentially fried pasta. And I'm here at Pizzeria di Matteo, which is supposed to have some pretty good fried food. So let's find out and get a hold of this fried pasta. So here we are, one frittatina, one euro fifty. They call it frittatina, but on the internet I saw frittata de pasta, so I guess it's both. So let's dig in, it looks pretty good. Mm. The first thing that hits me is how warm it is. Normally when you bite into street food, sometimes it can be a little cold because it's been sitting there for a long time, but this actually holds its own. And then you have cheese, I believe some peas, and also some sort of meat. One of the best things I've tasted today. And of course, pasta inside. All deep fried in a pan, I believe with egg as well. A type of pasta that you're not gonna find in many places around the world. I'm not sure where else in Italy you can get it, but here in Naples it is popular. And there's lots of uh, other people I've seen pass by picking one up for a quick one euro fifty as maybe a pre-dinner snack or even as a light dinner who knows there are also other fried options from Di Matteo so I've come to a quiet little corner of uh, central Naples I suppose on the other side of the Via Toledo Pesceria Azuria which is a seafood restaurant buzzing with locals and not somewhere many tourists will have heard of. I got this from some inside information and I've eaten here already once before. The food is so fresh, the seafood, and I can't wait to eat it again as my dinner for today. So first up, I've got some fresh oysters. I have to be careful not to tilt this too much because this is take two. <laughs> they all went sliding a second ago. So let's um, take some out and try the fresh seafood. Here we go. 
Mm. I bet this was caught this morning. Nice tinge of uh, citrus from the lemon. It's so juicy. It really is some of the best stuff you can get here in Naples when it comes to seafood. Just get the most simple thing, order a few oysters and taste just how good Pesheri Azura's reputation is. And for the main course, I have a type of pasta called Shallatelli, which is similar to spaghetti, only shorter and a little bit thicker. And in here I've got tomatoes, aubergine, and the fish is swordfish. So, served in a pretty authentic uh, looking dish here. So hopefully it tastes good. Mm. Again, with most dishes, all the ingredients are fresh. The tomatoes, the aubergine, and then especially the swordfish, which is so succulent and tender. The oily sauce of the dish is not that rich or that thick, and it means that the taste of the swordfish really comes through, and it doesn't give it that overbearing flavor, just kind of lightly salted, and it's all about tasting the freshness of the fish. So after finishing the excellent seafood there, there is still one more thing I want to try in this video before I wrap up for the day. It's now 11 p.m. at night and I want to hunt down a shot of limoncello, which is the famous lemon liqueur originating from places like Sorrento, the Amalfi Coast, and the island of Capri. So let's go and find a bar somewhere suitable to give the uh, liqueur a shot and use it as a digestive for all the food I've consumed today. Maybe it will help, maybe it won't. On we go. So I've now found a place which is essentially a bar that is a library. Pretty cool. And I've got my limoncello. What's in it? Lemon zest, sugar, water, and alcohol, of course. I'm not too sure on the usual portion sizes because normally when you get a limoncello after a meal in a restaurant, they give it to you in a shot glass. Today, I've got it like a short drink. So there's a lot more in terms of quantity here, but nevertheless, I've got a lot more food to digest. So it's not necessarily a problem. Limoncello down, and I'm gonna end the video here. So thank you very much for watching this Naples food tour. I know I didn't cover everything, just a few places that I wanted to try the food in and a few signature dishes. And if you have any suggestions of other food or drinks to have here in Napoli, then leave them in the comments below. And I'll see you on the next video. So stay tuned. Peace.